And we're back on WGN TV Political Report. So last week, President Joe Biden made his first visit to Illinois since Inauguration Day. Quick trip to Crystal Lake in northwest suburban McHenry County was a pitch for his plan to help the middle class. That long list of proposals includes extending child tax credits, creating a universal pre-K program, and making two years of community college free. The president is referring to those programs as human infrastructure. Well, Congresswoman Lauren Underwood was on hand during Wednesday's presidential visit to her 14th congressional district. Joining me this morning to talk all about it. Congresswoman, always good to see you. And I have to start by saying uh, most people were pretty surprised that he showed up in a Collar County that Trump won. I'm guessing you were surprised too. And what do you think the strategy was? Well, we were so honored to be able to welcome the president to our community. Crystal Lake is at the intersection of rural and suburban communities here in Northern Illinois. So I think it was the perfect place for him to come. And I think that he really got a good sense of where we are here in the Midwest uh, in terms of COVID recovery, the kinds of programs that would be helpful as we continue to grow our economy and put the pandemic behind us. One thing I think a lot of people sort of noticed, I certainly did, was you got a lot of shout outs from him. <laughs> you got him out before that event. You got him out on that day. And I'm guessing a lot of it because of th this work with the American Families Plan has to do with a three billion dollar portion of it, which I'm not going to steal the thunder here. It's been referred to by as the Momnibus Act. So <laughs> just tell us about how that got created. It's bigger now than it was. And I know uh, at one time you started working with uh, now Vice President Kamala Harris about it. That's right. So in my early days in Congress, I teamed up with Congresswoman Alma Adams from North Carolina to found the Black Maternal Health Caucus, which is really specifically focused to end our nation's maternal mortality crisis. You know, in the United States, Black women are three to four times more likely to die from pregnancy-related complications than their white counterparts. And for every death, we have 70, 70 near misses. And these are preventable. And so we decided to do something about it. So in 2020, I introduced a comprehensive piece of legislation with then some Senator Kamala Harris called the Black Maternal Health Momnibus Plan. Now, we have reintroduced it this year, added on some additional bills related to COVID because we needed to meet the moment. I've now introduced it with Senator Cory Booker, and President Biden is on board with these solutions to try to save mom's lives. So he's incorporating the mommy bus into this American Families Plan. Um, I think it's really important to recognize that in a pandemic environment, existing disparities got exacerbated. Um, and so if we are going to build back better, as President Biden says, that we have to be intentional about correcting some of these longstanding inequities and doing our part to take action right now. So as you know, the challenge, I think, for the Democrats as this proceeds is taking the American Families Plan, which now incorporates that. The president now talks about that as the human infrastructure effort and package. But a lot of Republicans are only on board for, uh, you know, the road the bridges piece of all of this. How do you get everybody on board with this, realizing human infrastructure is important too at this time and for these dollars? You know, what's really been interesting is during the pandemic, you know, yes, we had a really swift economic decline, but part of it was again accelerated because of the closure of childcare centers, right? Because, you know, we saw a mass exodus of women from the workforce and we've not seen women re-enter the workforce at the same rate as men. Why? Because we haven't corrected these issues. Um, and so I think that, you know, in a COVID context, in a pandemic context, in an economic recovery context, we have to be clear that there are some investments that are needed to address things like paid leave, to address things like child care, to make sure uh, that we have uh, the American people being able to get affordable health care, right? All of this is in an economic context. And, e and if our Republican colleagues are not willing to step up and meet the moment, you know, I think that we're going to be able to continue to take action as Democrats. Um, but what I think it's really important to note is that these policies are broadly popular among the American people nationwide and here in the 14th Congressional District in Northern Illinois. And so um, I know that sometimes folks do get a little turned off when everything's not bipartisan. Uh, but what I hear from my constituents is that they want us to get things done. And we're prepared to do just that. You know, I think about it, your training as a nurse, your healthcare background that propelled you to run for Congress in the first place, that issue yep. certainly took you to victory. So I guess what I'd like to know now is how does that background, which is, you know, not everybody has that background, how does that inform your analysis and thinking as you look at the various uh, proposals and bills that come into Congress on these related issues? 
You know, my background in nursing is critical to everything that I do. One of the things that we learned is to approach uh, patients in communities looking at the whole person or the whole circumstance. So it's not just the physical or mental health and well-being, but there's these things called social determinants of health. That's housing and nutrition and transportation. And so I really see this opportunity to invest in infrastructure as helping to improve the health and well-being of my community. Earlier today, I was in Joliet taking a look at a water main replacement. Why? Because we need to get the lead service lines up. And that's part of this American jobs plan. It's part of the infrastructure package. It's part of our opportunity to rebuild America. I think we have a really exciting opportunity to make key advancements. And I, you know, pursue these opportunities always with the lens of health um, because of my nursing background. The president's making every effort, every effort he can to get a bipartisan passage, certainly of that roads and bridges part of this bill. But it looks like the human infrastructure part of this bill may be Democrats only in the form of reconciliation. I, I, I found it it's really interesting, by the way, uh, Mitch McConnell, who just spoke, gave a speech and sort of said, hey, I didn't vote for this, but guess what? We've got $4 billion coming home to Kentucky. Many that's Republicans right. sort of sell the benefits of the money that's coming to their districts and sort of maybe sidestep the notion of, and by the way, I didn't vote for it. But is it, is it a good idea for Democrats to sort of try and bring them on board because everybody gets the benefit of it, Republicans and Democrats? We would be so excited to be able to work with our Republican colleagues on this type of an initiative. You know, the American Rescue Plan was transformative. I mean, everything from the stimulus checks to the funding for states and communities. I mean, when I look across my congressional district, we've benefited to the tune of $1 billion. $1 billion. And it's a shame that it's just House Democrats and Senate Democrats that delivered for our community in this way. I think that we can have a robust conversation. We can have the policy debates, and we should be able to work together to deliver this for our community. However, I want to be very clear. If our Republican colleagues continue to obstruct, we will be moving forward, even if it has to be as Democrats only. Congresswoman Lauren Underwood, thank you for your time today. I appreciate it. You have a great Sunday, and we'll continue to watch your efforts in Congress. Thanks so much. Thank you.